Hello everybody, so today I'm going to give you some general idea of uh, there's a firewall router uh, product is called PF Sense. What this uh, system do? So usually we have a home router like those kind of router. Those kind of um, most time we just uh, plug it in our like family uh, network and uh, get it uh, shared internet to so we can share the internet. Um, so this system PF Sense is kind of replacing this uh, device and uh, it can be installed on the regular uh, PC okay regular PC so this is the one so why we're using this uh, software router instead of this hardware router because yeah I'm going to introduce you some great feature of this system so you can install this system from here like you can download ISO file and uh, put it on the USB or burn it in a CD DVD then do the installation so I'm going I'm not going to repeat uh, all the installation process is uh, most likely is uh, just like a regular uh, OS installation but you do need make sure your computer need at least two network Ethernet port so one is for the WAN port one is for the LAN port okay so at least you you need two you need two of them so if you old PC don't have it you can buy a expansion card or maybe a USB Ethernet adapter I haven't tried that yet. <coughs> so if your PC got two Ethernet port, it's easy to install it, and then you can define one port is a WAN port, another one is a LAN port. Okay, so LAN port you can plug in your computer or a wireless access point. Okay, so here's the one. So after I install it, I already logged in so usually your LAN port will ask you to assign the IP address so this is my IP address so after that you can log into the web console interface so here's the console give you the general idea what's your system running IP address everything all the packages okay so I'm going to go through a couple of features and uh, you will see the interface from my video. So first of all, it's the network traffic monitor status. So um, people are wondering what is happening on our network and who is using the bandwidth. So this system gives you this ability to see it. Okay, so in the uh, status if you look at this one traffic graph graph graphic okay so if you look at the LAN port and the IP address you can see this guy is uh, downloading this speed is using those bandwidth so if it's using a lot of bandwidth you, you will realize it from here another place is you can go that pf top pf top so you can see the highest uh, bandwidth consumer here you can see it here okay so other than the real time uh, real time graphic you can also see the summary summary but this let's take a look on this one traffic total so traffic total is kind of summarize the usage uh, over the time okay so you can find out which network or which host is using the bandwidth so you can see the hourly hourly traffic time and also you can see daily Okay, daily who is using the bandwidth daily which IP address is using the most bandwidth 
monthly okay you can control the monthly traffic so sometimes your internet provider has a quarter or limit on your bandwidth so you can have here okay have it here and uh, top 10 days you know and uh, not a lot of money my this okay anyway so this is uh, the network traffic monitor status uh, functions okay second one I will give you another one is called DDNS client so DDNS client is very helpful when you have some service published onto your network so that means if for example you have a web server or you have a email server or some file sharing FTP site so then on the public IP if your public IP is uh, dynamic then you can use the DDNS to get your fixed name okay so here's the dynamic DNS okay it's in dynamic for example I got this one on my network okay so I can always use this name to access my public public uh, port okay then let's go back to the third one DSCP the reservation DSCP reservation means you can remember the IP address of each device and every time the device come into the network it always get the same address so if you look at DHCP server so here here you go this is all your remembered IP address so it's called static mapping okay so once you define all the device so you will know uh, once you know the IP address then you know the host name right away so you can identify which device uh, the is using the bandwidth or how do they use it okay when whatever so this is a great feature to help to identify all the devices on the network and another one that's a move forward is number four is DNS server and overrider so if you uh, scroll up here DNS dynamic no not this one it's uh, called DNS server so DNS server means it will enable a DNS service on this device and uh, people will query this the name okay so but here you can do the host override and the domain override for example if you want override the for example the YouTube you want block it then you can IP address you can give it a fake IP address that means you will block this website completely okay so this is the uh, usage of server and uh, let's move forward to take a look customize DNS server so by default you can have the DNS server from the, your provider but here in general setup you can have your own DNS server here you can put your own DNS server and don't use this one is don't use the DHCP of the one so that means it will use your own DNS server okay so and uh, let's move another one is the uh, VPN service oh this one got open VPN IPsec VPN and PPTP VPN so we see IPsec VPN open VPN so you can create the VPN so when you are away you can remotely access your network okay and IPsec uh, VPN is great feature to let you to build the VPN between two sites so yeah so you don't need to build VPN PC by PC this is a great feature okay and uh, 
let's see firewall rules oh this is a highly recommended feature and uh, it's very flexible <coughs> um, function to let you control how how the traffic going through the network basically it's defined who and how and when this kind of thing so if you go firewall and uh, rules so here are the rules you can allow or disallow the port or the traffic here and uh, for example if I go to here I define a multiple uh, allowed and also some disallowed disallowed rule if you edit this tool so you can see the action is block and uh, interface and the source you, d you can define the source and you can define destination as well and the action is allow and uh, which IP family and also some extra features and also if you expand the disp display the advanced feature you can see all there's a, a couple of very advanced feature for example you can define the which is OS is using when trying to access access the firewall okay so Windows Windows NT 2000 2003 98 mm, I don't see Windows 7 or Windows 10 interesting anyway so this is some features and also yeah you can define the schedule the schedule means when you want this one to be effective effective okay so if you go to the schedule let me find the schedule yeah here is the schedule you have if you have a multiple schedule defined then you can define heat pick up which schedule and also if you have multiple gateway you can define which gateways you should be going okay so file rule is uh, define who when what uh, how it will go through your file and another one is limiter limiter means you can control the uh, speed of the based on your rule for example here in this rule you can control use the limiter for example you if you limit is 10 meg and then you will have only 10 meg for this rule so any traffic match this rule only got 10 maximum 10 so here's the rule let's go here's the limiter traffic shaper and the limiter so you create a limiter here and right? create a limiter here so enable and uh, so you can make sure the bandwidth is and uh, okay limiter after you have a limiter then you can use it in the rules and you can use it in the rules so Okay, add it this one and scroll down, show display, then you can use the use the rule. Use the limiter, okay, in the rule. Okay. And uh, traffic scheduler scheduler okay scheduler means you can Define the uh, when the rule will be effective. So if you go here, look at the schedule. So if you check here, so this schedule schedules 
have those uh, defined Monday to Friday, uh, 8 to 10, Tuesday to Friday, 12 to 17. This is schedule. Once you have the schedules, you can apply it to the rule. Okay. Another one is the traffic shaper. Traffic shaper is uh, sometimes people also call it the Q QOS, right? QOS. This means you can prioritize the traffic across the network. So here's the traffic shaper. Traffic shaper. So I already defined those traffic shaper, but we can run the wizard one more time. So like, uh, first of all, you can define how many network, and then you can define which which type of the shape you you are going to use. So I'm going to use the priority one. It's a simple one, priority. So up was your maximum bandwidth up and down right so and the second you can like the VOIP VOIP should be enabled and uh, give the highest uh, priority okay and you can penalty the IP address so make it limit to a percentage okay And lower the limit for P2P network. Lower the P2P network. Okay. And also the network game, you want it higher priority or lower priority? You can define here. Other applications, uh, you can define here. Okay, and that's it. You finish the wizard. Okay, after you finish the wizard, you can see, you can see the status here. Status. Status here. Okay, you can see uh, most traffic is going to default, and you have some VoIP traffic as well as well okay yeah this is uh, very useful when you especially have some time sensitive service uh, yeah the good example is the VoIP uh, if you have VoIP phone system it's a great feature okay multiple when so when you have multiple when you can do the load balance load balance here so it's uh, load balancer okay load balancer you can add multiple when here okay pools virtual servers monitors because I don't have multiple when so I'm going to not able to show it so and another one is a uh, captive portal captive portal means you you can have a service so people have a captive portal captive portal okay captive portal just like the Starbucks uh, the page right so you can see you can display a page here like a Welcome to my network. Please enter. Please agree. Please enter your username, password. This kind of thing. Okay, great feature. Okay, so there's a lot of more features as well, but uh, I don't think I will go through everything. But those, uh, I think, the highlighted feature I would like to see in the advanced firewall. So most likely you will not find them on the uh, home-based uh, router, okay? So, yeah, thanks for watching.